Greetings. Let's discuss and demonstrate how to make a swipe map. S-W-I-P-E. Now a swipe map is a fascinating kind of way to compare two different themes such as land cover and population change or two different dates of the same theme. So for example old and new topographic maps or old versus new aerial photos versus satellite imagery which is what we're going to try here to tonight. In this particular demonst demonstration what we're going to do is demonstrate the swipe map. Now I've logged into my ArcGIS online account. And what I'm going to do now is start a new map. In this new map I'm going to search for some layers. I'm not going to search in my organization. Rather I'm going to search inside ArcGIS online. So inside ArcGIS online I'm going to search for some really nice aerial photography from the 1950s for Ames, Iowa. So you can see the imprint there. It's basically covering the county that Ames, Iowa is in. And I've got this map now inside ArcGIS Online. And you can see in the upper right that I'm actually logged into ArcGIS Online so that I can save this. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit so I can get a better extent when I open this map inside ArcGIS Online. So you can see the 1950s aerials there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and save this and I'm going to give it some metadata so that I can find it later and so other people can also find my map. This is oftentimes a neglected step but it's a very important one. So I'm going to give it some tags also so that I can quickly search for it and again so others can quickly search for it as well. So I'm also going to give it a summary and I'm basically going to copy the title in my case into the summary. So the map gets saved into my content. You know, one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the base map so I'm going to get the recent 2014 or 2013, I'd have to check the metadata, but satellite imagery so that I can compare it to the 1950s aerials. And, and by the way, I can use the transparency tool as you can see me demonstrate right here, but the swipe map will allow me to compare these in a different way, that's all. You have to pick the most beneficial way for your particular application. There's lots of different choices here. Turning on and turning off layers and using the transparency is one way to do it and also making the swipe map is another way to do it. So now that I've saved my map I can go into my content and I should see that map appear. Now I'm going to sort this my content on the reverse date. In other words so the most recent dates show up first. And if I do that, I'm going to see my map at the, at the start of this list, as you can see here, Ames, Iowa, 1950s imagery. I'm going to go ahead and open the map now in the map viewer, so that I can go and go ahead and take a look at it. And now, there it is, and I'm going to share it now, and I'm going to share it with everyone, as you can see here, but I'm also going to make a web application. Now, at the current time, the storytelling swipe application is in the second page of the different web apps that you can publish to. So I'm going to publish to a storytelling swipe right now. Excellent. Now as I do that, I'm going to also give it some metadata, some tags and so on, because this is going to be a different entry in my content inside ArcGIS Online. I've also got a web map, but I also am going to have a web application. Okay, so now that I've done that and I've added some metadata, I can go ahead and open this particular map. Great, well there's my entry and I'm going to go ahead and edit the metadata just a little bit here so that you can see and other people can see what I've done with this map. I'm going to go ahead and save that now and it all looks good. Now I could change the thumbnail, I'll do that later so that it reflects what the real contents are. Okay, I'm switching to builder mode, and the vertical bar is what I want. The layer in the web map that I'm going to swipe is the 1950s aerials. I don't need a legend because it's just black and white in the case of the 1950s, and color in the case of 2013 slash 2014 imagery. It doesn't really have a legend per se. On the left side, I'm going to indicate my contents, and in my case, it's the 2013 satellite imagery. On the right side, it's going to be my 1950s aerial photography. Once that's populated, I can go ahead and open the app. That's all there is to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it out. I'm going to look at this vertical bar, 
and there, lo and behold, is my swipe bar. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a, a context here. I'm going to say uh, in this description is that the left side is the 2013 satellite imagery. And on the right side is going to be my 1950s satellite, or sorry, aerial photography. Super. Let's also edit the description of the map. That all looks good. Let's go ahead and save that and test it out. Looks good right here. Let's go ahead and zoom in now to look at some land cover change. This is the fascinating part about all this. Now what I can do here is I can collapse this legend on the left side. See that? Excellent. Now the fascinating thing, or one of the fascinating things, is that you can see the US-30 bypass around the south side of Ames in the current image on the left, which did not exist in the 1950s. Also, this is probably early 50s before the Interstate Highway Act was uh, enacted, and so and I-35 did not exist in the 1950s image on the right side. Also, what's quite interesting is that you can see Ames, Iowa, uh, with the northwest trending neighborhoods, residential neighborhoods, off to the northwest of downtown. And Iowa State University was sort of out there, out there by itself, west and southwest of downtown, back in the old days. Kind of disconnected from downtown by these fields. And nowadays, though, Iowa State is actually part of the main community of Ames. Sure, it's still on the southwest side of it, but it's really merged in with Ames as part of the community. There aren't any main fields. Now, if you go in tight here, this is, I don't know, a remnant of World War II. It looks like some sort of old army barracks or military base or something like that. And you can see now it's completely different. But it'd be interesting to look at the history of uh, the north side of campus and see what that was. It looks like some sort of military operation to me. All right, you can see some of these buildings, though, from the old days are still left on campus. Uh, fortunately, the campus has, like many campuses, protected and preserved some of its old, beautiful architecture, and the same is the case here at Iowa State. Although our, there are many new buildings here, as you can see, but many old buildings are still there. And this building on the west side here that's got a sort of an oblique shape to it looks kind of modern, and lo and behold, on the right side, you can see that that was just an empty field. Another thing that's kind of interesting is that you can see how much more forest is actually uh, existing here in the residential parts of Ames um, than existed in the 1950s. And we can see some athletic fields that are still existing today. And as we move to the south, we can see some new athletic fields that exist now that did not exist back then. And if we keep going south, we're going to see the US-30 bypass and the ensuing urban development, commercial development, and so on that has sprouted up along uh, that bypass as, as the case is in so many bypasses around the, around the country and indeed around the world. So we can do some fascinating comparisons here and analyze the whys of where through this swipe application. Pretty neat stuff and pretty easy to do. So I encourage, encourage you to try this. Uh, create your own swipe application. Look at old versus new topographic maps, look at land cover change, and a whole lot more using this swipe application. Remember, it's just a web application, as are so many others, inside ArcGIS Online. And you're just publishing your ArcGIS Online map to the web application. I hope that was... Uh, uh, straightforward. When one thing we didn't do is we didn't share our applications. We've got a nice bit.ly uh, link that you could send to folks. But now, as you can see at the top, it says application is shared publicly. So again, it doesn't have to be old versus new imagery. It doesn't have to be old versus new topographic maps either. It could be something completely different, but something that you can effectively compare on the left and the right side, in other words, the west and the east side, or you can make a horizontal kind of a swipe map where then you're comparing north and south. Either way, it's the same kind of technique. You're publishing to a web application. Thanks.